Hi. You're on mute at the minute. Am I the first one? Hi. <laughs> yes, you are. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Oh, not too bad. <laughs> Where are you calling from? Uh, London. Oh. Yeah. Whereabouts in London? Uh, hi, Barnet, North London. Okay. Where my studio is. I live in my studio, so that's where I am. <laughs> hmm. We have just made canary and potatoes. Oh, lovely. How did you make them? Um, you have to cook them in a pan with really salty water. So okay. traditionally they used um, seawater. So ah. yeah, you can do that or you can just add loads and loads of salt. And then once they're um, cooked, you drain the water and then you try and get like a little salty crust on them. They go ah. like wrinkly and kind of have like a white crust on them from the salt. Yeah. Not very good for you, but they're very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made anything because I have been eaten. So I made myself a drink. So that's good enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We would so, normally have eaten, actually, I think it's just because we've been out for most of the day. Yeah. We've been at a, at a painting competition today. Okay. Um, so the some of the local shopping centers mm -hmm. yeah the local shopping centers is like two two shopping centers on the island here okay um and each year they hold a, a speed painting competition uh-huh um and did you take part or you just yeah watched? yeah we took, you we took both, part, we both <laughs> took part. so did uh, you win anything <laughs> i did yeah did I, came, I came second Oh, well done. Thank you. <laughs> so you, that means you have to, to paint very fast or you have to paint or they, that is a jury just choosing what, you know, what you paint or what is the criteria for winning? So you have to be at the shopping center and um, painting between 11 and three. Okay. And then they judge at half three. So okay. it was a free theme but you just had to paint at the shopping center. Oh, okay. So did you take your canvas there or what did you use? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I took oh, a canvas on an easel. Oh, wow. How exciting. Yeah. And what did you paint? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of good because it, it's, um, you just, you pick a, pick a spot anywhere in the, in the shopping center. And so you're just there amongst the, amongst the shoppers and the hustle and bustle of of Saturday business. Hmm. Oh, how <laughs> exciting. I mean, it is a great idea. Whoever had the idea to to start that, yeah, amazing. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it, actually. It's tiring. It's a little bit tiring, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, but you great. don't have to paint the whole day, isn't it? You can't just... Yeah, yeah, if you want to use less time, you can. That's the most time that you can use. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, use most of the time, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have been chatting with the people as well, so not only painting. <laughs> yeah, lots of people stop and ask what you're doing, and because there's not a lot of advertising about it. So a lot of the people who are there shopping, they don't really know what's going on. So you spend a lot of time explaining. And there's a few times when the judges come around and talk to you and things like that. And the organizers coming around telling you like what's happening and where you have to go. And yeah. That is cool. So the COVID restriction are not too, too bad over there then. They, they are on this island, we're really lucky because yeah. we're in a very low level. Um, so we have not a lot of cases and our restrictions are quite, um, well, there aren't really that many. It's only that you have to wear a mask if you're indoors. 
but where we were was on a terrace we were outdoors so we didn't have to um but some of the other islands are really struggling and they have much stricter um rules with like certain times where things have to close and um limits on how many people can be together and how many households can meet and things like this oh, okay. so yeah each of the islands is different has its own okay. yeah yeah so I guess that's a bit like England and Wales and Scotland are all different aren't they um yeah I guess so I mean right now it is not too bad here it is just you need to wear masks when you're inside but the that looks like that they are going they are heading to another lockdown that is typical you know just really? they, they give the people freedom and you know the yeah the numbers go high and then they get you know I think it's just like a becoming a system really <laughs> really frustrating isn't it yeah I don't want to go you know for its conspiracy theories but <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's difficult not to, though, isn't it? When you feel like that, it's yeah, really exactly. difficult not to. Yeah, but yeah. here has been a lot of rain, actually, just crazy this year. A lot of rain for the last few months, only most of the time it's raining. And but I don't, yeah, I don't complain. Summer is good, it's a still summer. <laughs> <laughs> we saw on the news, um. Which station was it? Like some tube stations? Yeah. Totally flooded? Yeah, I think it was a Stratford and the best. Yeah, East. Yeah, and some. Unbelievable. Yeah, but I was uh, at the South Bank a few days ago and the, the um, River Thames is quite high. I, I have never seen, you know, that the level of the water coming that high that feels like that any time can flood. <laughs> Oh. So that is kind of because there has been really a lot of rain every day, mm -hmm. a lot of rain, and in, in summer it's even worse because they are kind of more heavy rains than. Yeah. But that is going on since April, actually February, April, actually April, May. Almost every, most of the days has been raining, so it's crazy this year. Mm. That's not good. Yeah. How was the festival? Have you been happy with everything so far? <laughs> I didn't watch all the videos, but I tried my best to. <laughs> There's so many. There's so to much. Be a stuff. part of it, and you know, just like <laughs> getting a sense of it. Thank you so much for everything. Oh, so, thank thank you. you for being a part of it. Thank it's, you. Um, yeah, it's been been a lot of work this year. Mm -hmm. it? it has been quite a lot of work. But it's yeah. been it's been really good fun as well, huh? We've had a, we've had really nice time at yeah. lots of the events and um, had some really nice feedback off people and okay, so, yeah. So it's been it's been really lovely. Um, but I think that we can't wait for it to be a physical <laughs> thing as well. I think that we're always going to yeah. have an online element now as we move forward, but. It's kind of one of the things that we thought we could talk about tonight, actually. Hey, Lucija. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm ready with a uh, gin tonic. <laughs> a gin and tonic. Oh, actually, I have got a <laughs> You're gin. also on gin. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> I designed that. Uh, I had a mixture. I bought it, you know, as the a bottle, and I thought that's the only thing in my fridge. So I just, <laughs> I'm going to have that. <laughs> I that should just so make fun. some efforts to celebrate with you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, I like that you have it in a yeah a celebratory glass. Mine looks really like I just have vodka and coke, and it just looks. <laughs> it's not oh. the same. I need to have like a a party glass. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I mean. I think mean, the glass is irrelevant, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bit I more... wanted to say that you guys see that I made an effort and it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'm way more overwhelmed with the fact that you're drinking vodka and Coke. What's wrong with that? Because actually you should I mean... have rum and Coke. <laughs> I do like rum and coke too. <laughs> Are you not a vodka family, CJ? No, I absolutely hate vodka. 
So it always throws me when people drink vodka and enjoy it. So yeah, it's I love fascinating it. Fascinating to me. <laughs> I've always loved it. I don't know why. I think my my mum used to drink vodka when I was a kid. It was like her if she had like a a Friday night drink, she would have a vodka, you know. And so then when I started drinking as an adult, I was like, well, what what do people drink? My mum drinks vodka, so. I think that's how it started, and then we had some Polish next door neighbors,、ah, and they yeah, the really Pol- helped. Our Polish friends as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand、mm. that is a different way of drinking vodka by Polish people、yeah. than <laughs> than we drink it. I don't understand how I. I mean, we had dinner with our friends quite a few times, and still we didn't learn that we should, you know, maybe drink like. One in every four drinks that they drink, because every time, <laughs> and everything has vodka in it. They give you a glass of like champagne or cava, and it'd be pink at the bottom, and you'd be like, "What's that? Oh, that's cherry vodka." <laughs> <laughs> like everything. Yeah, but they had、um, in their freezer. They had a whole section. Yeah. That was full of. Of different flavored Polish vodka. Yes, they so, are so great. The different flavors with the different fruits and、um, yeah, it's quite yeah. dangerous. <laughs> But、um, yeah, every every time we went to their house for dinner, it was it was just every drink, and it wasn't it wasn't even it was like, do you want a glass of cava or champagne? And like Sarah said, it'd have vodka in it. Mm-hmm. And it'd be served with a shot. Yeah, and、mm-hmm. they'd serve you a shot of vodka to go with、yeah. that as well. <laughs> Just unbelievable. I think they don't believe anything else is、um, worthy to drink than vodka because I remember years ago when I visited them, I I got them some really good whiskey,、um, and、uh, they say hasty. We don't drink whiskey in Poland. <laughs> like <laughs> it is like so that is a good, you know. Paid a lot of money for it. I wanted, you know, just <laughs>、um, to bring you something really special. But、uh, that, yeah, actually, I think they they don't appreciate anything else than vodka. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess I've been drinking the wrong kind of vodka. Yeah. Maybe that's that. That that may be the reason why I don't like it. Maybe no, we、I、just don't have good vodka in Slovenia.、Uh, <laughs> do they not make? Do they not make vodka in Slovenia? Sorry. Do they not make vodka in Slovenia? No, no, it's all imported. Ah,、oh, okay. Okay.、Oh. Yeah, but they're very into gin lately, so they've been、mm. making their own gin. And there's、right. these huge festivals of gin and tonic. So you come、yeah. there and you taste all different kinds of tonics and all different kinds of gins, and you know the stuff that goes with it. And it's a huge thing now. Yeah, yeah,、mm-hmm. it is in the UK too, huh? Yeah, they have big gin festivals in the UK.、Yeah. Hi, Karin. Nice to see you again. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Where are you, Karine? I am in a restaurant <laughs> near from <laughs> house with my daughter. <laughs> Hi. Hi. That's a little accent. That's awesome. I love that you are actually having dinner whilst we are having dinner. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, gin festivals. We went to one, didn't we? Oh no, I went with some girls. I went to a gin festival with some girls. Yeah, it was held at、um, like a historic hall, which was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that every year they find something that's very in. Yeah. Yeah, From craft beers, and then it was a Perol spritz, and then it was now it's gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. So maybe next year it will be all about vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Luana. Hi, Luana. Hello. Nice to see you again. <laughs> 
we've been talking about what we are eating and drinking and everyone was a little bit disgusted <laughs> more about drinking i was um, <laughs> i'm drinking vodka and apparently that is not a good drink but i quite like it you just enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> What are you on, Luana? Is that tea? There's a tea. We can't hear you. I don't can't know hear why. You again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. The fun and games that we all have on Zoom. I wonder, like, what will replace it when we go back to being in person? All of that kind of. You know, oh, you're on mute. I can't see. I can only see your forehead. I can't see you. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Yeah. When we're back in person, what will be that? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 There was that meeting, wasn't there, where um, it was like a council meeting. And there was one guy, his, his daughter had been using his laptop. And he joined a Zoom meeting and he was a cat. No, it was a, it was a, a trial. It? Well, it was oh, a yeah, trial. it was a trial. <laughs> and it was one of the lawyers. Did you see it? No. It was on the news. It was hilarious. So they were having a trial over Zoom. It was when the pandemic was really bad. And I think, was it one of the lawyers? Yeah, it was one of the lawyers. Came on and he had like a cat nose and whiskers and ears. And he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't turn it off, I can't turn it off. <laughs> and they had to start because they had a certain amount of time. And he had to start as a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to do like the whole the whole trial as a cat. And he couldn't, he couldn't turn it off. <laughs> really? Oh, that's uh, and that was not on purpose. No, I cannot believe it. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. it was his daughter. Apparently yeah, not. Been his laptop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all you seem to get, isn't it? You're on mute. You're on mute. I can't hear you. I can see you, but you're still on mute. <laughs> yeah, I find it quite, uh, you know, different to see all these people and including celebrities in their home and just really kind of more laid back. And I don't know, it's just some uh, very different experience, isn't it? Normally you see them. We haven't had the experience to see them in their home without makeup or whatever, in yeah. or whatever, or just checking what pets they have or we had no idea <laughs> or you know what's what's kind of a stuff hanging on on, on the walls or whatever it is just like i don't know it's a bit of voyeurism isn't it you can <laughs> see yeah. other people's life very often we have our cats joining in in our Zoom yeah. meetings. Yeah. <laughs> Luana had an event yesterday and um, one of our kittens took part. <laughs> Although I don't know if actually you heard him breathing, but he was he he was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cute. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> Have you lost my train of thought? What was I? Yes, celebrities and seeing like behind their closed doors. I think it's kind of changed. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like a question rather than an absolute. Like maybe it has changed societal norms somehow. Because yeah. actually, things like my dad lectures at a college mm -hmm. and he had to lecture at home. But yeah. my brother and my mum also both had to work from home. And yeah. so my dad is in his bedroom giving lectures to his yeah. students. <laughs> like that's a totally, previously, if you were like, oh yeah, I'm just going to video call my student from my yeah. bedroom, people yeah. would be like, whoa. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't your dad do something? Didn't your dad like call? call a meeting or something by mistake in Zoom. Yes. And he was like, just in the house kind of. Yes. Yeah, he did do that when he was first getting used to it. He's not very tech savvy. Um, and yeah, he started a Zoom meeting and he was just like cleaning the house. I mean, luckily he was dressed. 
but he was like <laughs> singing to himself. He had the football on in the background and he was like loading the dishwasher and talking to the dishwasher like, oh, you go in there. Oh, you get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes actually the people more human, isn't it? And yeah, and also I, I think it's somehow it's great. I like it that you know the boundaries get sometimes a bit blurred, and you know that just like you know things changes or they are not the same. It is just like I don't know. I I see things. I see that as positive that the people perception of each other and maybe has changed through this time and just getting another view of other people or themselves. I don't know. But it's been interesting think, as well to see how um, to see how artists have kind of embraced technology during the during the pandemic. Yeah. I think it's kind of because quite a lot of artists shy away from technology, don't they? Well that's a bit of a broad sweep, right. Simon. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that people are using technology more creatively mm. now. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to. Has it been, and um, this kind of blurring of boundaries, has it been the same? Like in Slovenia, Lucija, and in Brazil, Juan, has it been similar? Or do you not think it's had such an impact? Uh, I think it's similar, but honestly, I'm not very, very onto this thing. I don't mm -hmm. care very much about celebrities, so I don't know because I didn't, you know, stay tuned with this. Yeah. Yeah. But I think so because a lot of artists are making lives and stuff like this, and but I, I don't really know. <laughs> Have you seen lots of artists using technology to kind of carry on their practice and carry on sharing it? Yeah, a lot, yeah. And doing like YouTube events and with donations and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know right now how it is. It was more like last year. Last year, the, there were a lot of events online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it when people started doing things for donations. I do quite a lot of stuff for donations. And I think it's, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It kind of levels the playing field a little bit, you know? Because if somebody has lots of money and kind of values what they're doing, then they'll, they will donate something. But it doesn't prohibit people from taking part that might really get something from it. So it kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Levels. Yeah, yeah no, but... It does level the playing field, but that's not what I mean. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a, it'll come to me later, but I do yeah. like it. What's your experience yeah. being this EJ? Well, here, I think that at the beginning, there was a lot of people took action and there were um, kind of concerts online through Facebook live events and, and so on. But later on, people, especially artists, took to the streets uh, in the sign of protest and they started uh, cycling every Friday. But it wasn't a protest with the restrictions of COVID and everything else. It was a protest against the, the government that took place, mm -hmm. um, the power. And I really like the idea that actually came to to action this year, and that is traveling exhibition. So you can order an exhibition of paintings or music or whatever to your home, and then bring it to you, place it all around your your apartment, and they explain what's going on. They, they give you the the tour of that exhibition and then put it in, back in the suitcases and go to another location. How oh, exciting. That's wow. So cool. I like that. Yeah. That's so cool. Who organized that, Lucija? Uh, that was organized by one of the galleries. I can send you the link. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's really cool. I would I love think it's to a very talk to nice them. Project. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'd love to talk to them and find out the logistics behind that. This is the thing that as like an organizer has excited me about COVID because things like that in the past, you would have ideas and you'd be like, I've got this great idea. You know, we're going to send an exhibition in a suitcase around houses and everyone <laughs> would just be like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. But I feel like that has changed, you know? So now I feel like people are more open. I feel like we're given a lot more freedom, a lot more scope. Yeah. So I, I would love to know, like, I want to read their risk assessment. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm such a geek. But That's it's also very cool that one one friend of mine, he told me that he ordered an exhibition to his place and it was a performance piece. So a performance artist came to his place and she did some dance, interpretive dance or contemporary dance piece. And it was the whole show. Wow. Wow. That's... That's so cool. It is, it's really like cool. That. Really, really cool. Oh. I mean, I think every idea that makes the art more accessible, that is kind of an exciting because I personally, I really dislike <laughs> for a long time this galleries and you know, that that's focused on this gallery really, not a lot of people go to galleries really, even before COVID time and yeah. not a lot of good art maybe you can see or exciting art you see in the galleries. And for example, in London, there are thousands and thousands of galleries and they always choose, you know, certain artists and always the same, they're smaller spaces. It's absolutely boring. I mean, I, I am happy just to consider any other idea to exhibit, you know, my art or see the art. I mean, whatever it is on the street, on the whatever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just that bores me. I don't know how other people feel about it. I know it is kind of a prestige to show your stuff in a gallery and have solo exhibition, but that doesn't really excite me do you know what I mean and is it a prestige because this is a thing like we were talking about this just the other day and how people have like artists on their CVs have got you know I exhibited here and so and so holds my work in their collection and all of this kind of stuff yeah and I don't have that on my CV and I don't have it on my website and I was explaining that for me like it doesn't matter like it's not if people are only going to be interested in me because of the fact that I'm linked to certain people and certain things, yeah. that doesn't interest me. It's because that's all about money. It's all about commercialism yeah. and art as a commodity. Yes. And for me, that kind of isn't, isn't what I'm about, you know? So I feel that a lot of galleries, yeah, kind of give me a similar feeling to what you're describing. Not Good. all galleries, but a lot of <laughs> them. A, a lot of them, of them. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. I'm glad I'm not I know I'm not the only one because it is just like yes. Now we all want to go to Kareen. Who <laughs> 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 just had the most yeah, amazing pizza. <laughs> Oh pizza. Um, wow. <laughs> Remember this enjoy. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> yeah anyone else any thoughts on um art galleries and what we think or don't think i just want to understand what you said um i don't know your name hasty hasty yeah you think london the art scene in london is boring really no no i don't think the art scene in london is boring i generally say i there are thousands of galleries and they choose the artists. They, I mean, basically this conflict between that art world, that the artists think they have to, to do something to be recognized by the art world and just being an artist and wanting to exhibit their art to the people, to the, to the you know, to the public. Um, because there are certain people visit certain galleries and the art world is not made by the artists. So they use just the art as 
So as a commodity and do you know what I mean? It's all about the money. So that is this conflict that you think you should do something in order to be recognized by the art world, in order to, to be recognized all together and that your art is seen and actually finding it quite, um, you know, disgusting that you have to do that basically. Yeah. And also the, the galleries that charge a large amount of money to go in and see the yeah. exhibition, you know? And then again, that just makes it elitist. It, it just kind of segregates the, the community. Yeah, but, but the galleries are also free that that is not really in my opinion accessible to the majority of people you know basically for me ideally was like like a, you know when I am honest I like like a street art or graffiti you know because everybody can see it do you know yeah. what I mean the people can see it everybody is, is access you know can access it and do you know what I mean but yeah. Being in a small gallery, putting some art, a lot of people don't go in and don't see it. Yeah. So that is why when it was online, somehow I thought it's more accessible. It's something, it's good. I mean, you know, everybody can access it if they want to. It's, it's just yeah. like, yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah. Yes, because it's really kind of weird for me to hear this about London, that is such a, a big center of the art world. And, being in Brazil, I live in a city that is not very small, but it's, the art scene is not very big. So I got a lot of this feeling that it's always the same artist, but I didn't imagine this in London. But I, I understand that it doesn't matter the size, it's always the same logic. And yeah. here where I am now, my, in my hometown, it's a city that is very uh, unequal. Like there are a lot of social issues here. And I went to a gallery a few weeks ago and the galleries here, the small galleries, commercial galleries doesn't even have like something in the front that you know it's a gallery. It's so close. No one that is passing by know what it is inside. Exactly. Yeah. So it's for very, very few to enter and to actually see the work. That, I think yeah. it's really weird. That is what that was my point as well. Yeah, exactly. What is the point that is, you know, it's on your CV. You had a solo exhibition in a gallery in London when actually maybe ten people saw it. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, yeah. you want to, and actually, other you know, everybody can see it, or a lot of people can uh, can access it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah. I think as well, people. Um, get the wrong impression about the UK in terms of art because a lot of galleries in the UK are free which they're not in Europe like a, a lot of galleries you have to well all galleries really you have to pay for in mainland Europe um, on the Canary Islands it's a little bit different um, the council spaces you don't have to pay for but the private galleries you still do um, yeah. and so then not only do you have the kind of um, barrier of the building itself you've got the barrier of the money whereas I think in the UK a lot of the problems around the inequality of access is actually to do with the the structure itself and how it presents you know there, there's plenty of people we um, are part of a carnival troupe in the UK and there's plenty of people who we have met through that experience who do not feel comfortable approaching the art world through the doors of an art gallery, you know? Yeah. They see art as something totally different. It's part of their life. It's kind of ingrained in who they are and how they live. And so it just feels really like jarring to then like try and, like that doesn't work, you know? And so there's all these communities for actually whom the, the traditional art gallery doesn't work. So even though it's free, it's still quite a barrier, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah this is terrible. <laughs> Do you have to pay for galleries, Lucija, or not? Uh, here, some galleries are free of charge, and the other ones do have a small fee. But a few, I think it's two or three times a year, 
all the galleries and museums are for free. And they're usually around some uh, special holidays or, you know, cultural events. Yeah. When you can enter every gallery in the city without pay and see all the exhibitions plus the, you know, hosting exhibitions, which are usually way overpriced. Mm. Hello, Matt. But I think just it's... joined the group. Just wanted to say hello. Yeah. Good evening, Matt. <laughs> Sorry, Lucy. You go on. Uh, but I think it's okay. The the galleries there are not. I mean, they're not ex that expensive. But I especially I have a problem with uh, the theater because I think that there's this price barrier. They have a lot of quality um, performances that they offer there, but the prices are, you know, way over the roof. So you cannot uh, afford it as much as you would like to. Yeah. Theatre is really difficult. So my brother runs um, a theatre group. He's a he's a director of a company called Inspiration, and. Through him and through my cousin, he was a singer and actor in musical theatre in London. Um, I have learned how difficult it is to actually make ends meet. And it sounds crazy, but like Josh, my brother, he makes his tickets just so that he breaks even. He runs not for profit. And still his ticket prices are 10, 12 pounds sterling because he has to make sure that everybody gets their costumes, every the sets there. He has to pay for the hire of the building, the promotion, like the amount of cost. And his isn't even like a professional outfit. It's an amateur outfit. So the people do it for fun. They don't have to get paid. So then when I think about my cousin Drew, he was in Mamma Mia in, in London. And it was like a cast of about 30 in a, in a West End theatre. Like, how much is all of that going to cost? And so I have this kind of, I, I'm like really conflicted because I don't think that any of these artists who have made the props and the costumes and the backdrops and the performers and the directors and like, I think all of those people need to be paid fairly. But I also think that it needs to be accessible and that access needs to be fair as well. And so then I get stuck because I don't I don't have an answer, you know? I don't know what the answer is. It's a bit hard because I used to do costumes as well for TV, theatre and movies. And except for the TV, everything was pretty much pro bono. Mm -hmm. It was just the, you know, doing it for the project because you want to see it succeed and do well, but the rest is, there's not that much money in, I'm not talking about the, the elite professional theatres, but, you know, the, the smaller theatres with great programmes. Yeah. Mm. it's difficult it's really difficult and when you feel passionately about a project like you say if you want it to succeed you're just like yeah like I'll, I'll make your costume I'll yeah. paint your backdrop I'll do this I'll do that you know and sometimes it works really well like um if people if everybody works like that if all creatives work like that then together you can make something really beautiful. And actually it doesn't really matter if it's not making lots of money, you know, if it's like a, a beautiful thing, that's lovely in itself. But then, I mean, if you were doing that and it was taking your time, then that's time that you could have been spending making something for a commission that's paying your bills. It's, it's this kind of battle, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you have to negotiate within yourself and try to figure out what can you do, what can you offer that it's not at your cost. Yeah. But I think it's terrible that 
we are artists and our work is not being paid like it's, it's not only a hobby at least not for me i really want this to be my work and yeah. how is it going to be my work if i'm not getting paid and this is a, such a big problem that we see a lot of institutions and openings and traditions and the artists not getting paid so how you keep the the real you know how you keep working yeah and, yeah. and everyone it's it's bad for everyone in the in the process like for for the actors and the person who is going to make the the customs this our work should be well yeah and they Um, <laughs> it's like the only profession that you keep only receiving publicity as a form of payment and this is such a big problem yeah 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 it's something it's it's really difficult doing like it's something we talk about a lot when we talk about the festivals because every year we have artists who suggest well why don't you charge a why don't you charge a fee for people to take part you know because then you could do this that and the other charge a fee for people to view the gallery charge a fee for people to view the galleries charge a fee for the events um we we get told that quite a lot from artists but also from audience members like oh you should charge for this you should charge for this And we also, in the back of our minds, are like, all of the people that contribute to the festival are giving their time for free. So, like, Luana did an event. She did it for free. She just came. She did it, you know. Um, Lucy just organized a project and is managing a Facebook page that is kind of controlling this. The, it's the traveling sketchbook. Maybe Lucy will talk about it a little bit in a bit. Um, <laughs> um And again, that's been done because it's something that Lucidia wants to do. And it's kind of, it's really difficult because we do the festivals for, for free. You know, we don't have any funding. We do all of the organization and, and stuff for free. And so there's kind of like, um, like we're meeting the artists on the same level. You know, there's not like a hierarchy within the festival, but like we feel like we and you <laughs> should be getting paid, you know? It's like this kind of, Like we're all not getting paid and we're all doing something lovely and we all have a lovely time doing it and everybody gets to see some amazing artwork and we get to meet amazing people and make connections that otherwise we wouldn't have made. But um, but yeah, I mean, at some point everyone has rent or mortgage or yeah. bills and you can't just give and give and give and give. At some point you have to, um, you know, do something that where you can you can earn money. Yeah. So it's something that we talk about a lot. And then the, the other the other side of it is we talk about so kind of so where do we bring money in from? Mm. Do we charge do we charge artists to participate? And that's something that we're kind of completely against. <laughs> so then do we charge people to come into uh, to the exhibitions? And again, that's something that we're against because we want art to be available to all. And then it's like, well, maybe we should try and get sponsorship. Mm. But then there's always kind of criteria that you have to meet and things that you have to do to, to get the sponsorship money from the corporate people. To yeah. It becomes a lot less ethical that's what you're you're being yeah. very pc but it becomes <laughs> a lot less ethical that's the problem as soon as you get sponsorship it's got this kind of commercial slant to it and you have to you know if you take the sponsorship you have to run with that and that is something that makes us a little bit uncomfortable as yeah. well so we just it's something that we go round and round in circles about if anyone has yeah. any any suggestions. any suggestions any ideas about i think we should do. all move to lanzarote and as i have an artist island and we paint and exhibit for free yeah. <laughs> we just live together in like a big we just artist live together and yeah. all the potatoes you made almost every day 
<laughs> with the yeah. sea water. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and don't you have like any public good policies there for funding, like from the gov government? So, yes, and yeah, <laughs> again, it's a little bit of a difficult one. <laughs> a little bit of a difficult one. So, um, the government here have um have their own agenda when it comes to art and it's about politics it's about politics and it's it's quite a kind of um short-sighted um governing here because the the people who are in power from what we've experienced in our short time here don't seem to stay in power very long and normally a coalitions don't get exactly what they want and so a lot of the decisions that are made particularly around arts and culture it seems are well the last government did this so we're going to do this you know we're going to whatever they did we're going to take it away so for example there was this amazing installation by um, Jason Zakeres who's like a contemporary sculptor I'm not sure if you know him um, but he he puts a lot of his works in the sea or under the water um, and it was four four horsemen but the heads were petrol pumps and they were in the bay in Arecife and they were tidal so the, the water would cover them and then and there's obviously lots of social commentary you know around global warming and ethical decisions about life and da, 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 da. last government put them in this government within about three months of being in power took them all away put them in a warehouse Oh. put them in a warehouse and store them and now they've gone to a much more grateful country <laughs> that's a horrible yeah, thing to sure. say um, they, go to... <laughs> they went to i'm not sure maybe the netherlands yes or... i was gonna say maybe denmark, oh, maybe denmark. Yeah. yeah it was somewhere in in kind of northern um europe mainland europe but it was um it was uh the sculpture was actually exhibited in the in the thames yeah, I remember something about, I, I, I don't remember have seen it, but I have heard of that, you know, what you described. Yeah. 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 And we, we were kind of part of a protest group that tried to stop them, tried to stop them from being, re being removed yeah. from, from public view. And like Sarah said, they got, they got taken out and just put in a shipping container in a warehouse. And the, the previous right. government hadn't even bought them. They'd been donated by the artist. Yeah. And so, and they're, I mean, they're worth such a lot of money. I know it's not about money, but they are. And yeah. so even that was kind of like pushed to one side. It just felt really kind of like tit for tat, you know? And a lot of decisions that I see around arts and culture seem to be like that. It's, and so then it, it, again, it becomes really difficult because you're like, okay, well, I'd love to work with the local government and the councils, but I get like, I've got quite strong views, you know, and quite kind of fast ethics about how things should be. And it, I don't know if they're in line, you know, necessarily. I don't know. Maybe they are, maybe, maybe it's like a, like a cultural barrier or a communication barrier. I don't know. It's just, it's not the impression that I get. Mm. It seems like it's not a very good place and time to be an artist anywhere right now I and mean, in this world, you know. But it's so great that you are doing this, this great job with the festivals, all free and independent, independent, but it's so great. Thank you so much. Because even without the recognition from you know, money and stuff like that, that we need. But having this moment to connect and to do art together is really fulfilling, so great. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. And thank you, thank you all for, for being a part of it. Yeah. You know, obviously we couldn't do it without, without you. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be an idea without artists. <laughs> I, I was thinking if that wouldn't be virtual, um, you know, you, Practically, you couldn't accept over 300 artists' works if that wouldn't be virtual, right? You couldn't. Well, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, are, where, where you were going to exhibit them? Do you know what I mean? I, I had no idea. So the, the first year, this is, this is our third year 
um, here on Lanzarote. And the first year we had how many artists? 156, I think, off the top of my head. And how many? Really? Are... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And everybody had one piece of art? Or... No. No, some people did, did have up to three. Did you exhibit them, 150? I mean, where is their space? You, you, so you... in this sense, we worked with um, not the government, but with the, the council. So here there's like an overarching, like the, the political government, which is called the Cabildo. And then there's like the, the local governance, yeah. I suppose, like councils. Like councils. Yeah, like councils in the UK. Uh, here they're called ayuntamientos. And they have some really beautiful properties, um, just like the councils in the UK, I guess. Um, where the the buildings are like of historic importance to that area and so they look after them and refurbish them and use them you know maybe as office space or gallery space or yeah. multi-purpose space and so we had um one of those spaces from the capital city we had the casa de cultura and then we worked with um a local cultural association um which is a group of well, it's kind of a bit of a, a fluid group, but like maybe five-ish artists, Canarian artists, have formed an, a, a cultural association called Parta Cerebral, and they've been given a space to use for their activities. So we worked with them and used their space. And then, how did we find out about the bodega? We also, we used a bodega's wine museum. They took down all of their stuff and we put up our stuff. Oh, because, so a friend, it was one of those, like, a friend of a friend of a friend worked at this big sports venue that's in oh, yeah. the um, other side of the island and said, I think you could have one of your events here and um, they'll be able to get free wine. They'll get sponsored by a bodega. And we were like, okay, well, if it's a local bodega, that could be really good. And we went to meet with the person who was going to organise the event for us. And he said, oh, I'll give you their, con I'll put you in contact with the bodega. They're really interested in supporting arts and culture. And so we just emailed and said, we have no money, but we have about 300 artworks that we'd like to put up. <laughs> Would you be interested in that? And, and they said, yes. Yes, they said, yeah, come, <laughs> come down. Uh -huh. And they, they, like, they took all their stuff out of the museum and let us hang all, all the artworks in the museum. Wow. And, and gave us an amazing opening with like amazing tapas and then new wines to sample. Yeah, and, they, they, oh, they, they were so generous. They donated the wines for for the inauguration and we had um we had a kind of an evening with Sarah, the festival director. Um and they gave all the wine for that too, didn't they? Yeah. And didn't didn't ask for, didn't anything, ask for anything in return. Yeah, not even like, can you donate a piece of artwork or anything? Like nothing. It was just like, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So what we hope is to find more things like this as we, because each year we've seemed to have kind of accrued about a hundred extra artists each year. <laughs> so it's kind of getting bigger and bigger. At some point we might have to say we can't accept everybody, which would make me a bit sad. But um, yeah, hopefully we can find some more places where we can do something like that. Yeah, we got, um, after the first year, we got um, really keen interest from the neighboring island of Fuerteventura. Okay. And um, one, of our, one of our artists from the, from the first year kind of worked with the local government over there um, and he did a bit of communication for us and they offered us all of their spaces throughout the island, all the theatres, everything for free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and offered to, to provide a funding budget for us. Wow. So that was, that was really exciting and they, they didn't want anything in return either. They didn't seem to want anything just to have the just to have the, just festival, to have the festival was yeah you know they really seemed to value it and I th I think maybe that was different because it the the artist I'm talking about Ugo Rami Perez is a is an architect and he's the he's the that's the profession 
he's the head of the Architects Association for Fuerteventura. So he has a lot of connections. Connections. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that kind of gave it a bit more gravitas, perhaps, than just kind of, you know, some random people with coloured hair turning up and going, put up some work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was, we were super excited. That was for 2020. Um, and like, we were super excited because one of the things that we were, we were hoping to build on after the first year was to have performance pieces so we could have kind of street performances um, mm. and just engage with the local public yeah. you know without them having to to go into a, a particular space to to view art yeah um, and so we were really excited about that but then COVID, then COVID, COVID yeah. struck so and... many people's <laughs> stories from last year it's like oh it's gonna da, 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 da. and like yeah had someone else has just yes. arrived. Who's that? Good evening, Alan. Hello, Alan. Welcome. I think Alan's been here for a little bit. He's been... Oh, has he? You're on mute. That's not like you, Alan. He's been hiding. Hey, guys. Hi. <laughs> hey, <laughs> how are you doing? Not bad. Not bad yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, good. good thank you. Good. What point have you come in? Have yeah. you got anything to add to the conversation? Have you heard conversation yet? <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was um, listening. Um, you know, it's nice to just sit back and listen for a change, and um, you know, just be be like a passenger, you know, and uh, um, and enjoy the discussion. Um, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's difficult um, trying to make money out of the arts. You know, um, you know, I mean, I I do a job. You know, I can. That's what you know pays my rent, my mortgage, and. Um, facilitates things but it's just it's just so so competitive um you know under in the authorities and uh undervalue it as a service um, and don't you know always looking to get stuff for free or or whatever um you know it's difficult uh we all go through phases i think where you know we have success and then we you know, we have failures and, you know, it just compounds things. It gives you a lot more to deal with, you know, a lot more pressure. Um, you have to, you know, build such an, an amazing resilience. It just feels, you know, sometimes you think, you know, is it really worth it? But then, you know, you have guys like yourself that, you know, put events on such as this that give, give people, you know, the you know, the entitlement that they should be getting and the respect, I think. Um, rather than, you know, feeling like you're not wanted um, because it's just, you know, it just seems like, you know, I don't know, maybe the whole whole COVID thing as well, it just feels like, you know, um, I quite felt quite distanced from the arts, to be honest. Um, you know, it can make you certainly feel, I think it's, I, I get the feeling just now it's, it's really um, contracted to like a really small thing, you know, so it's it's probably even more difficult. So, yeah, it's, the festival has been great. Thank you very much. Highly appreciated that this has been my third year of taking part. So, um, so hopefully I'll be back again in the future, maybe even in person. Yes, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. In person, yes. in person. Yeah, next that's year. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it'd be so cool to come and actually visit. Yeah. Or you guys come and visit Glasgow, either way. Yes, I'm totally up for coming to <laughs> yeah, Glasgow. Me I love too. Glasgow. I'd love yeah. to go back to Glasgow. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Are you going to be holding an art festival? Well, in, in Glasgow. Um, yeah. Well, why not? Why not? You know. Uh, I, you know, I mean, in terms of, I think, uh, I don't think there's enough representation of, uh, you know, certain type of arts, you know, like, I think, uh, for a start, art and technology is really underrepresented. Um, also, like, art to do with, um, actually, with, like, you know, privilege and class and stuff, I think that's become really un underrepresented. So I think there's always opportunity to, you know, create a platform um, 
you know, for like, you know, to be, um, you know, to be like uh, di- diver- to diversify. Um, mm-hmm. I also think that you, there's not enough kind of, um, you know, like, you know, the artist, the artist run space, you know, has, has really become more, I don't know, I think it's become more formal now. It's, it's like, a, it's not as informal as it used to be. It's more like a, um, just like a, you know, like a part of, you know, the extended art institution. Uh, yeah, it's kind of been it, sucked up by it a little bit, hasn't you know, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of now within the, firmly within the boundaries of the institution, where, whereas it kind of set, set out to not be part of it, but... But certainly, you know, I mean, I think it would be amazing to um, to follow in your footsteps, or should I say, stumble in your footsteps? Well, uh, we're we're stumbling yeah. in Ken's footsteps, so. <laughs> yeah, the legendary Professor Kenneth G. Hey, who uh, I, I was hoping he might have been here this evening. But, yeah, I uh, hoped that he was going to be able to come, but um, I don't. Lots of people that I hoped were going to be here and a few people who I spoke to and then, I don't know, stuff must have come up. Somebody was talking before about enjoying art in the streets and it made me think of Sarah Misselbrook who um, has done a couple of events um, and she's a participant in the festival but also she runs, um, a, a, like it's like a mini festival in um, rural Spain. And it's all kind of about getting out into the into the streets and making art really accessible and making art with, um, yeah, I don't want to talk on her behalf, but the that's kind of something that's really exciting. And in fact, when we put this recording on um, YouTube, I'll share the link because um, I think that I'll check with her and make sure it's okay, obviously. Yeah. But um, I think that perhaps that's something that could be of interest to people. I think that's potentially a more like the kind of artist spaces that you're referring to, um, Alan, those kind of more informal artist-led spaces, I think that, yeah, perhaps this is is one of those from what I've learned this year. Mm. Yeah. It's a shame she's not really talk about Superb. it. Superb. Sarah Misselbrook. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you mm. might have come to one of the events that she was at, Alan. You might have met her virtually. In the city I used to live, there is a very nice festival. You hear me? Yeah, yeah loud and clear. Yeah. The, there is a very nice festival of street art. That is, uh, it selects artists to make graffitis in really, really big buildings. Yeah. And you go to a place like there is a chairs and there's a bar a place that is open and you can see the artist painting the buildings in the city like you have a view to this to the downtown and to the buildings and it's amazing it's really beautiful and then you have the city with a lot of gigantic paintings that you can see when you you walk around it's awesome that sounds amazing yeah it is how often does it happen? I think once a year. Okay. They have a really nice video about it. I'm gonna look for it. Ah, yeah. That would be cool. London's got quite a lot of artist-led spaces, hasn't it? I don't know what the scene's like at the minute, but again, it, like going back a few years, it was kind of really exciting and. Yeah, they are kind of different projects. Uh, I haven't heard anything last year, obviously due to COVID, mm. but different areas, um, they have got like, yes, uh, presenting art, uh, exhibiting art in the, in the, on the street or certain places, um, uh, different, you know, in, in one area, if that is the streets or the walls or the tunnels or the bars and certain, uh, in East London, yeah, they are, Several of them. That is, um, but the point it is, um, I mean, London is huge, and there are so many artists living here, and not everybody applies can get a space. You know what yeah. I mean? And things like that. But uh, yeah, there are so many things going around. Uh, yeah. 
or the in the villages there are these art uh, uh, trails that you know or the they can exhibit you know in their own home the artists and the people can go visit and there are so many things I mean there are so many ideas one can do yeah exhibit the art outside the galleries definitely that was that was something that we we took part in um when we used to live in the UK yeah um we used to live up in in the north just up kind of in between Leeds and Bradford okay. um, and we lived in a in a world heritage site mm-hmm. and once a year they used to do that they used to have a like an arts trail throughout the village and the yeah. people just used to open up the living room move all the furniture out of the living room hang the art in the hang the art up mm-hmm. and it was just like people just used to come and, and walk around and come into your house mm-hmm. Yeah. That was nice, but I did find that a lot of people were more interested in like looking at my chimney breast than looking <laughs> at my painting. Yeah. Because you know, so it was in this kind of model village and, and everyone come in and like I look guess, at the chimney and look at the Yeah, it is more a social gathering and having fun and but well <laughs> yeah. But there was the the last year that we did it, um we had a, a lady, she was, a, she was about 80, wasn't she? And she came in and just like wandered around and, and had a look. And she, she came to us after she'd had a look at the artwork. And she said, I'm so glad that you've opened this house. She said, I've been coming every year in the hope that someone would open this house because this is the house that I grew up in. Uh... And she told us all the, all the stories of of how she grew up in the house and how many people lived there and and it was so beautiful yeah. and we had um the the organization that that put on the event printed off um a list of kind of the house's history yeah and like previous owners yeah previous it? owners yeah. and things like that and like they gave you that to put up in the in the house to display it and we gave that to the to the lady mm-hmm. when she came. The last person on the list was her grandparents, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was so that was like it is nice. Yeah. Yeah, art just... yeah, art is all about connection, isn't it? That yeah. you need to Yeah. That was a good year, actually, because that was well, it was a bad year because it was the year that the UK voted for Brexit. But it was a good arts trail because the day after they voted for Brexit, I, ca- I cancelled work, I was distraught. And I went and made what I called the Brexit jug, which was this jug all about how obsessed I was about Brexit, and which I then sold to a Tory voter who voted for Brexit because he didn't realise that it was a Brexit joke. He just thought it was really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, you, you had your little revenge then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was at that event that he bought it. Yeah. That was funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you have artist spaces in Slovenia? I'm really interested in Slovenia. I've never been. Well, uh, you have to come. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, we actually have, we have this autonomous inner city, art city called Metilkova. And it's full of, you know, nightclubs and you have, DJs and it's uh, all covered in graffitis and sculptures and installations and people usually when they visit Ljubljana they always go to Metilkova for the experience because it's I mean it's just crazy you cannot comprehend what what's going on there it's just you know so colorful and so many people and always there's something happening and and the place is very cool because it used to be a military station with a prison military prison that it's now a hostel so you can sleep in the cell rooms with the bars and everything and all the the buildings were repurposed for um they're, they're used for 
culture and art activities. So you have either galleries or LGBTQ bars. And um, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's mm. sounds, sounds good. Cool. <laughs> sounds really cool. I love the repurposing of buildings. There's nothing that upsets me more than buildings being knocked down and just, new buildings being built. Yeah. Yeah. Or just just new buildings being built when there's loads of buildings that are empty and things like this. Just mm -hmm. yeah, it was something actually, Luana. When I was in Brazil, I was taken to a project um, in Sao Paulo, and it was a it was a former five star hotel that had gone um, kaput because of the something to do with the, a new airline, a new um, airport was built in the city, and it made it too noisy and congested, and so this once really kind of fancy hotel went bust and um uh, a lady took it over a woman took it over and moved in a thousand homeless families and runs it as like a, a co-op and it's just like i was blown away it was just unbelievable seeing how they all work together they all look after the buildings there's like schedules to like look after all of the communal areas they had a library, they had a studio. Downstairs in the basement, they had like um, a bar and a music space. It was just, is that really common in Brazil to have this kind of taking over and occupying of spaces? Yes, it's very common right now, not only in Sao Paulo, but other big, big cities also. And it's a very big housing problem in the big cities. Mm -hmm. And it's is what you said, there are already buildings, empty buildings, yeah. but people cannot afford to live them, live on them. So it is uh, a common thing they're doing now because people are organizing to solve, to solve themselves this problem. Yeah. The government often doesn't solve the housing issue. Mm. Yeah. So we have these occupations in the city, but also outside the city and in buildings, but also like in, in hotels, like, like it, the one you said you saw, but in, in different kind of places too, mm -hmm. abandoned places. Are they quite frequently um, run by women? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I noticed it had this kind of really strong, like feminist kind of matriarchal <laughs> feel. It was just, it just didn't feel like any organization that I had experienced, you know? It mm -hmm. really, really blew yeah. me away. There's really something very specific about this kind of movement because usually the women are like ahead of the family. Very often they're left, the men left, leave them and they have to take care of the kids and they have to take care of themselves so they organize so they can can have a home so a lot of this movement you see leadership from women and it's really strong and really something yeah yeah interesting the village doesn't it sorry what? it takes a village yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So they take care of the, the place, the space, and they organize and do this, the libraries and uh, how do you say school for little children? Yeah. And also like gardening to, yeah. to plant food themselves yeah. and they make food also together. There are a lot of of really nice examples of this kind of movement of people working together and make great, great things. And not only for themselves, but sometimes they help also the community around them, like homeless people that remain wrong, homeless, they can sometimes go there and eat. And it's, it's really amazing how people organize and take care of the, the problems. And, but all, of course, it's not ideal it's really, really hard. It's uh, a lot of poverty and bad conditions. Mm. But they, with a lot of work and struggle, get to make 
really great things together. So it's kind of like the philosophy of commons economy, where you, whatever talent or you do what you can do best for the community and everyone pitches in. And if you have an over, over you of something, you, you spread it around, you give it to, to others who don't have it and there's this exchanges happening and so on. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the, the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's this whole philosophy of commons living whereas there's this kind of sharing economy where everyone where people come together and everyone has their own you know talents or things that they can do for the community and they work together to support each other and others around them Yes, and also they like invite or, or receive people from like the academy, like architects and people that ha have different knowledges, so they can help also. But um, the economy part, I don't know. I don't even know how it works. But okay. it's, I know it's very difficult. They they don't have good conditions financially, but Yes, yeah, some people that can give donate their, their work and they also organize so their work is, is made collectively. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna go. But I'm not really a specialist, I'm I'm just uh, I know a few occupations because I was in a women's movement in the city I used to live, and they were close to these occupations. So we visit a few and work a little bit with them, but I I can I can um, say very much. I can speak for them. So, yeah. but it's yeah. it's really interesting, and there there are movies about this, and yeah, it's really. Uh, a big, a big thing going on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wondered if after the, um, well, it's not even after the pandemic, but kind of because of the pandemic. Oh, thank you. Everyone's putting links in the chat. That's awesome. We'll put them on the YouTube um, so that everyone can have them and save them. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I thought that perhaps we'd see more of that kind of thing happening. Um, but actually, I don't know how much of that, I've not seen a lot of it happening here. I've seen people individually taking over abandoned spaces, but I've not seen kind of collective occupation of yeah. spaces, I don't think. Yeah, because we, we've got quite a few abandoned hotels. I mean, not us personally. <laughs> if it was us personally, they'd all be art studio. <laughs> <laughs> the, the island. Has, <laughs> Um, quite a few abandoned hotels and kind of abandoned apartment complexes that were constructed um, kind of illegally with dodgy deals with government officials. Um, or without permission, they just went and did it. Yeah. yeah. And, and so there's like, there's a lot of there's a lot of accommodation that could be used. Um, and some of it's pretty much finished. I mean, some of it is just shells, but some of it has got, you know, like tiled bathrooms. Like you're talking, you could, you could live there, yeah. you know. It wouldn't, it wouldn't take much to no, actually. No, just hooking up to the mains. You'd be good to go. Yeah. And there's, there's one hotel, one large hotel that's been, been abandoned since the seventies, I think. Um, and kind of a lot of homeless people moved in there because it was it was very isolated, and so they were they were kind of left to themselves. They weren't they weren't kind of ridiculed and or bothered by yeah the authorities yeah. But again, like 
I think here especially there's like you said people aren't working they don't seem to be working together um it just seems to be kind of single occupations in a yeah i mean that it's just what location. we've seen obviously we can't yeah. talk for homeless people because we are not homeless but from an external point of view that's yeah. how it appears i definitely think that homelessness has become more of an issue here throughout the pandemic. yeah i don't know if that's the experience around the world yeah yeah we've been we've been kind of really struck by the the financial implications of the, of the pandemic because the island here um, relies on tourism um, and kind of I think I think it's eighty five percent I think of the population are employed in tourism. Or, yeah, or related industries. Yeah, tourism or related yeah. industries. And so wow. with the lockdown, there's been so many people and so many businesses that have just gone under and, you know, just struggled. And uh, it's been really hard to, really hard to experience. Mm. Yeah, we've been very fortunate, actually. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've managed to work throughout... I actually hadn't had any time off during the <laughs> pandemic at all until, when did I go to LEO? April, yeah. May. Yeah. Um, so I'd worked all the way through. It, it became um, like really um, urgent. There was urgent work from galleries and museums because <clears throat> they all shut down and then there's no kind of participation um, there was no kind of community connection ongoing and it became very clear very quickly that it wasn't going to be over and done with very fast and that that would need to happen and um, that's kind of my facilitation work that I commute to the UK for is working with galleries and museums so I spent a lot of time with my head facing a screen kind of coming up with different activities and ideas and doing videos and recordings and yeah, all sorts of stuff, and so I was really lucky. Yeah, we were really lucky. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. curious to know what are your jobs? Hmm? What What are our jobs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have two main jobs, I guess. One is is teaching yoga, which is kind of a job. I mean, I teach yoga for donations, so. It's kind of not a job, but I just kind of invite people to practice with me at the beach or on my rooftop. But that's one thing that I do. And then I kind of like, I guess my professional head is when I do creative facilitation. So I'm, I'm quite heavily involved in um, facilitating creative education projects for galleries and museums in the UK, um, like the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, the Tetley, Leeds Art Gallery. Um, uh, yeah, and some arts charities and things like this. So that's that's my job. This is so great. <laughs> yeah, you've got a cool job. Huh? Thanks. <laughs> it's a hard work <laughs> job, but I like it. <laughs> um, I do a I do a boring job. I I work for an airline. Uh, <laughs> 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 based here on the island um, and so I've had no work since the very start of the pandemic um, and I've just had an email to say that I might not be going back to work until May 2022 oh my god <laughs> wow so, so everyone to Canary Island so Simon would have something to do yeah, yeah. So the festival, the festivals kept me really busy, and it's been. It's, it's good though. Huh? You needed it. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was kind of going stir crazy, you know, with like so, so long with like no work and just being sat in the house. What does everyone else do? I do um, software development. Um. You come and work for me, Simon, and we'll make lots of money together, yeah? 
It's been a long time since I've worked in uh, in the IT industry, Alan. Yeah, I'm sure we can. Uh, if you need help, um, for the rest of all next year, like you know, because it must have been like a heck of a lot of work. So if you I need tell you what, you're promising a, a lot a in shirt. this, Alan. <laughs> you're promising to set up an art festival and to help us with ours. Oh. And we've got you. We, we, we're we're recording. You. We've got evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually make all. When you've been drinking. You always, always usually make these crazy plans, you know, to yeah. get up at six a.m. the next morning, and you know, I don't know, go and climb a mountain or something, you know. <laughs> but, uh, no, but no, definitely. Can I can, can I just interject a very quick um, <clears throat> big up for Slovenia here because. Uh, on the kind of the icons at the top, you know, have a Brazilian artist and a Slovenian artist. It, it brought to mind a couple of years ago um, when I went to Venice. I don't don't know if you know an, an artist, Juliana Nevis Hoffman, Brazilian artist. Um, well, it's like a some Brazilian artists, including herself, went to. They were invited to Brazil, uh, not Brazil, Slovenia. Um, to go and make some work. Um, I can't remember the name of the place, but the, the Brazilian embassy there, you know, you know, gave them accommodation and everything. And, uh, and then they, they came over to Venice afterwards and I, I met them in Venice. And they said, you know, you know, I asked, how was Slovenia, you know? I don't know anything about Slovenia. It, it was absolutely fantastic absolutely amazing the most amazing friendliest people you could ever meet i was like wow that's amazing coming actually from brazilian people yeah yeah because you think maybe brazil people are the most friendliest people you can meet so so there you go that's that really um inspired me to uh, go and visit slovenia so uh well done uh was um nice little um sounds like a nice little place um um, to go and check out, but yeah, that was that was my my little story of uh, the you know the Brazilian and the Slovenian connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds lovely. I'm always surprised when uh, my experience as a Slovene is not that warm and welcoming at all, but tourists always say the other way around they always say that they had the best time that the people were so welcoming and warm and and friendly but i think that us slovenes we see ourselves as very cold but the reality might be that we're completely wrong <laughs> we have the totally wrong image and we are more Balkan-like than, you know, Austrian-like. Because we like to see ourselves as more influenced by Austria than the Balkans. But I think that, you know, you cannot escape the roots. Yeah, Austrian can be friendly, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. yeah, interesting right. part of the world for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. bordered by so you're bordered by so many countries: um, Croatia, mm -hmm. Italy, Austria, uh, Hungary. Yeah, wow. Hungary is any, um, any, any art residency. Hungary, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be cool to visit Budapest. Yeah, one of the participating artists um, has, well, she splits her time between Lanzarote, Germany and Hungary. And um, she's told me some amazing things about Hungary. And I just had, like one, I had no idea really where it was in the world, which sounds terrible, but I just knew it was kind of European. You know, I didn't really know where it, no, but you know, when you've just got like an idea of like, Europe is this kind of mass rather than actually 
this kind of set like each part has got its separate identity it's not just this big thing you know it's just there um and yeah she's she's taught me quite a lot about it so i'm hoping to get to hungary at some point yeah, I think that uh, for everyone, I think that Slovenia is a great starting point. So you can go to Hungary and you can go to Austria, you can go to Italy, you can go to Croatia. So, you know, it's a very good starting point to just <laughs> go around. Yeah, yeah. yeah that sold it for me. I'm sorry. Sounds great. <laughs> Yeah, so do they, do they um, do art residencies uh, in Slovenia? Slovenia? Uh, they are art residency in Slovenia. Usually they are through either Ministry of Culture or embassies. So you have to check the, the open calls. But there's also, I know because they have this exchange program and I went to London for a month on art residency through the Ministry of Culture. Cool. Um, so they're, you know, hosting uh, people around and also the galleries, they have their own residency places and apartments. So they also have open calls and you can apply to that and you can be artists living in an apartment above the gallery space and and it's uh, all around. Uh, I think most of them are in Ljubljana, so it's scattered around the city. But I think there are some ones that are either on the seaside or maybe Maribor area. That's great. And it has yeah. a Ministry of Culture. We don't well, have one anymore. No, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm going to, Luana, I can find out um, where it was my Brazilian friends went in Slovenia, you know, if you're interested in uh, checking it out. Uh, but they said it was amazing, you know. I think it was a village they were staying in. There might be a difference between a village and the city. You know, people are um, way more friendly in a village, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> Always. Yeah, but in Slovenia, it's very hard to, if you come from a big city, everything looks like a village to you. Because y you have to realize that there are only two million people living in a very small country and every city is like a suburbs of other cities so yeah. i think it, i think it'll be it's going to be good once you know uh we hopefully you know get past you know the whole covid thing and you know borders open up again and you know we can travel freely and you know go and do residencies and things because you know the last um certainly the i was i was actually meant to go to brazil last year and uh that had to get cancelled and uh which was you know deeply disappointing um i was looking to go to china this year and that's been uh put on hold and possibly do it next year but you know it's really uh you know i, I can't wait to get out and just um, you know, go and go travel and visit new places again and meet people. It's, it's been too long. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a bit of a common theme. Lots of artists have said similar things to me, and I feel the same. Um, I'm actually about to do a little bit. Little bit. I'm quite excited. Um, so I'm going to a new festival. That's it's art, an artist-led festival. That's about artist-led spaces and events it's called juxtapose and it's in denmark and it's kind of been influenced right. by the stockholm supermarket art fair which has got like this really great reputation for being kind of yeah really artist-led and kind of not establishment biased so i'm really excited to go but i'm also a little bit scared which is weird because like i travel on my own all the time normally 
and frequently yeah, yeah. and to all sorts of places but I'm a little bit like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I feel like I need to sort myself out but I do I feel a little bit anxious <laughs> about it you got where where else you gone you got another yeah I'm going to the Ukraine in September there's a print festival I had a print Lord me accept. good Lord well <laughs> um, I had a print accept oh, a, a festival impressive. so so yes I'm gonna head to the Ukraine Kiev for a week and see what it's like there Hey. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, a little bit scary. Um, and Lucija actually just reminded me that I really wanted to give um, a little bit of a shout out about LEED 2023. I was in a meeting this week and LEED is going to be the European Capital of Culture for 2023. And they have just, what day is it today? Saturday. Yesterday, they put out an international call for artist engagements. Um, so I thought that people might be interested in seeing I've not looked at it I don't know what it is but I just heard in this meeting that it was going out on Friday so I was going to share it with the international artists here <laughs> so, <check> it out. <laughs> thanks yeah it could be something interesting we'll have to share did you say Europe, European yeah. yeah did you say Europe, European capital yeah of culture yeah wow that's impressive yeah yeah. It's a biggie. And 2025 is Bradford. No way. European no city. Way. <laughs> way. Way. Bradford. And, and not only that, it's like West Yorkshire's just like done a deal with the devil, I'm sure. Because also in 2023, Kirk Lees is the year of, it's like, Oh, I can't even remember what it's called. It's to do with performing arts, but it's like the same kind of honour, but for performing arts. So it's basically like the whole rhubarb triangle for, for two years is just going to be absolutely submerged in arts and culture, which is just amazing. But they obviously mm. sold their well. soul. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, um, we'll have to find the, the advert, the, not the advert, the kind of the, the promotional video that Leeds did for the Capital of Culture 2023. Um, because one of one of the scenes in the in the video, it kind of explains it explains about all the, the mix of cultures that are that are in Leeds. And the carnival troupe that we used to we used to perform with the in used the, to still perform. Well yes, still when we can get back. Um, in the, the Leeds West Indian Carnival, um, they had a huge part in the in the promotional video, and it was, yeah, it was just kind of tingling. It was. It was really good. Yeah. It was a really good video because it was, uh, it was there was this whole thing about whether or not they were going to still be able to have it because of Brexit, and then. It was like, well, we may not be in the EU, but we're still European. There was this really like kind of pro connectivity, yeah. which was really lovely. Yeah. Yes, cool. Yeah. <laughs> this Brexit really made some mess, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It yeah. does feel like that. <clears throat> I know that not everybody feels like that, so I'm always a little bit cautious about talking about it um but yeah, of course you know yeah i i'm very sad about it yeah me too yeah me too it's uh it's definitely made made things hard for us being british and being out in in an eu country that's not even really registered by the eu yeah by the EU. um because one of the things that that kind of our long-term goal for, for those of you who haven't, haven't seen, our long-term goal is to, to set up residential art spaces here um, and to have kind of shared accommodation, shared communal spaces um, with 24-hour access to gallery space studio and space. studio space. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were hoping to get EU funding for that. And now, because we're British, 
<laughs> we can't. We can't apply. Yeah. So we're we're waiting to see how that pans out. Yeah. I'm sure I don't understand. I don't understand that. Um, Simon, us. say that again. Sorry, Alan. Was a full, are you not uh, like a, a settled EU citizen? Is it no, we can't become Spanish for it? ten years. So, no, like, you know no. how Ken is now French. Yeah, we, yep, yeah. Yep. So we have to wait. See, we've only been yeah. here for three years. Yeah, so we've got to. Uh, so actually, by citizenship rather than. So Which yeah, it, it goes on than, citizenship yeah. rather than residency. Yeah, so we're both we're both okay. Spanish residents, and we've got. Well, I'm kind of split residents. Yeah. but we've <laughs> we've got all our all our legal paperwork, but. Yeah, it's just we're we just fall into yeah. a bit of a gap. I'm sure that it's affected lots of other people yeah. in much worse ways, <laughs> and we will find a way. You know, we're determined. We'll find a way. Yep. For mm. oh, yeah. sure. Yes. Yes. Well, it's been lovely talking to everybody. I don't know if anyone has anything else they'd like to add or anything that we, they wanted to talk about that we've not chatted about. It's just been really lovely having this kind of... That was like, really nice. Yeah, thank you so much. That was really good. I'm glad I, I, I could manage to join in because I missed the most of the, you know, kind of Zoom meetings. I watched the videos after that afterwards in um, on YouTube, but I managed this time and I could say thank you and cheers, so which is nice. <laughs> thank you, Hasti. Thank cheers. you, Hasti. Cheers, cheers to you, you as well. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers, I will guys. join in on that, that uh, I too missed most of the, the things going on on Zoom and I even surprised myself that I managed to get time today and that I remembered actually <laughs> and it's just awesome to to meet all of you and chat about different things and share experiences so thank you for organizing everything yeah thank you Lucy and, and thank you for being a such an active part of the festival again mm -hmm. you've been do you want to? No. I, was, I thought you were going to mention the traveling sketchbook. Oh yeah, well the traveling sketchbook is now on its way. Um, so it's done India and Turkey, and now it's on its way. I want to say Romania. Is that where traveling is? Romania. Yeah. I think so. I think it's on its way to Romania, and then it's going to go to England, and then it's got about six other countries left. So. It's on its way. It's on its way around. Um, so, it's such a cool project, Lucija, honestly. So hopefully it will come to you around New Year's? <laughs> well, I don't know because we're already quite considerably behind schedule um, because India was a little bit difficult. There were like local <laughs> lockdowns and the postal service wasn't actually running for a little bit. Um, and then it finally got to Turkey, but after she'd been able to post it, there was huge delays because the postal service hadn't been working. So she paid for like a really fast postal service and actually it took almost a month. So I think she was quite upset. Then it did get to Turkey and um, Celine has done hers and posted it. But when she went to the post office, post office was shut for a week for refurbishment so then it got delayed another week um, it's just like a comedy of errors you know um and but Celine messaged me and said at the beginning of of last week that it had gone on Monday um and that it was on 10 day post so hopefully it'll be in um Romania next week so no, but I don't know. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give an end date because, <laughs> because I don't know how long all the posts will take. You don't have to because this is a part of the project. You have to take it as it is, and I think that this is the the beauty of it all. That yeah. it's not just what you do, but it's the traveling. It's the experience of what the sketchbook also experiences with all the delays and post office that are closed and you know it's it's a package deal so yeah i think as well it will make the 
it, well, it'll be interesting to see the, the different artists' responses because with all the delays, you know, so some people have had the sketchbook kind of in a very strict lockdown. Mm. And then by the time it gets further on, different artists will be experiencing something totally different. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how, how the artworks kind of change. Yeah, I'm very looking forward to it and cannot wait to see the end results and all the... I hope that uh, every participating artist will also comment on their experience and share it with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I know a couple of definitely one and potentially two of the participating artists um, aren't on Facebook and so aren't in the group for the traveling sketchbook. Um, but they have both said that they will email comments and then we can share them in the group on their behalf. So, yeah, yeah. so things will, will definitely start stacking up in the group. Yeah. yeah. And um, if you've taken part in the postcard project, um, the postcards will be getting sent out to you. Next week? Yes. Yes. We went and took down the gallery um, and... Yeah, we have all of the postcards ready to send back out. Yeah. And we've had some beautiful postcards <gasps> made by um, people that actually visited the exhibition. Oh. So we left we left a big stack of blank postcards um, and some art materials. And some disinfectant. And some disinfectant. COVID. Um, <laughs> and invited people that, that visited the exhibition to to create their own postcard and, and be part of the exhibition as well. Mm. We'll try and get them up actually online at some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for thank you, thank all, you all for, for coming joining. and sharing for your events and for your postcards and for your projects. And yeah, yeah. it's just been lovely to work with you all. It really has. Here's to next year. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. And we've, so got, nice. we've got a reflection event tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we do. I'm saying, like, goodbye as if yeah. this is, this is this the, is end. the end. Yeah. <laughs> there is, if, if you would like to add suggestions for the, for the coming year or add any reflections on things that you've found about this year, then tomorrow night at 8 o'clock there's going to be just, like, a just like this, just like an informal discussion, but just kind of more focused on things that you enjoyed, things that you think could have been done better, things that you'd like to see added or taken away, anything like this, just so that we can oh, try and... So I'd like to say if you're doing any yoga classes online, I'd love to join in. You know. Oh, you missed this. <laughs> During the pandemic, Alan, Sarah, Sarah did... Yeah. Sarah did yoga classes every week. I did. I did free classes twice a week, actually, mm -hmm. online during um, the pandemic oh, to keep people going. Yeah. I'll share a video uh, with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're doing any more, please let me know. I want to do some yoga, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ellen, I'm envious of you because I can see that you have some light in the background yeah daylight and sitting it's still outside. daylight yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah and i'm yeah. here in the total darkness <laughs> uh, me too it's one of one of the one of the benefits of well this is like 55 degrees north so yeah it's still uh still nice and nice and light yeah but it's getting dark so yeah yeah it's actually it been really like... really hot so it's been a good source so. It's like getting close to ten o'clock, though, huh? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, quarter it's to ten. Quarter, yeah. quarter to ten and still daylight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here is eleven o'clock. So. Yeah. Well, one of the it's few, one of the darkness. few benefits still left of staying in. Great Britain, <laughs> you know, is you get you get, you get more daylight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the only benefit left. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, get out to Lanzarote and see you guys. And uh, absolutely been brilliant seeing you again over the festival. Um, yeah, yeah, I did so. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like that picture in the um, background. Is that yours, Sarah? Yeah, this is this is one of my. It was going to be a background, and then it turned out. Uh, you know, when you paint something, and then you think actually it's not a background. That's just a finished piece. It's kind of yeah. It's all. Oh, it's like this. Um, it's like a big square, square abstract. Nice colors. Nice. Um, <laughs> I like a little bit of color. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. a little tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, if you can't join us tomorrow, yes. then thank you so much for participating. Um, we will be sending out an email um, when we finally get a chance to catch our breath. Yes, um, with details of the catalogue. Yeah, the catalogue will be will be published shortly. Yeah. Um, and we will also send out just a little questionnaire to try and get a bit of feedback. Yeah. Um, again, to see what you enjoyed, what we did well, what we didn't do so well, um, and suggestions on, on what we can do in the future. And uh, hopefully we'll... See you next year, next year's festival. Yes, we shall all come and take on one of those uh, unoccupied uh, hotels. Or <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, I'd be like, yeah. I didn't tell them to. And Luana <laughs> is coming as Brazilian uh, women to take over, uh, yeah. taking, the lead, taking over the leadership. <laughs> Luana, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> one of, one of okay, things. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we'll um, that we will ask for in the in the email that we send out is suggestions for next year's theme as well. Yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah, okay. Get thinking. Yes, yeah, get your thinking caps on. I can't even <clears throat> remember who suggested this theme now. There was quite a few, quite a few artists. Because we had about eight different ones, but this one was suggested quite a lot, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that it should be something in the realms of new hopes and new new beginnings and so on, because everything lately has been all around COVID and all around this um, issues and situations that we've been faced with. And I think it would be a nice new look or breath if we could think about some positive things and positive reflections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like no, I, think you've actually just I think you've actually just suggested it. Breath. Breath. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Yeah. Again, Luana. There's like some weird connection <laughs> happening here between you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I did a, a performance yesterday with Breath. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good, really good. Yeah. Lucija and Luana, have you met before? No. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Stay safe. Thank you, Thank you guys. See you soon. Mr. Simon and Ms. Sarah, take care. See you again. Yeah, soon. You guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Nice meeting you all. Take nice care. to meet Bye. you guys as well. Take care soon. Yeah. Take care. Take see care. you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.